Hello, this is Rachel from the Shades of Orange. Today I want to do the rest of my February wrap up. I already talked about all the horror I read in a separate video. So now I'm talking about thrillers, true crime, science fiction, and graphic novels. As always, I'm gonna put timestamps down below so if you're not interested in a genre, you can skip right over it. Let's get started. First, I wanna talk thrillers. And if you're a longtime subscriber of my channel, you might have noticed that I've gone through a bit of a recent dry spell. And I haven't been reading as many thrillers lately. I don't want anyone to panic. In fact, that's why I'm bringing this up, is the fact that I still want to be reading psychological thrillers. I enjoy them, but I've been struggling to find ones that I've really connected with. And I don't tend to talk about books that I DNF or don't finish on this channel. So that's why you haven't gotten as many thrillers from me lately. But I did read two this month, one which I really enjoyed, but I am looking for recommendations for newer thrillers that are a little bit different, something that is just out of the box. I have gotten a little bit tired of the domestic thriller about a husband and wife. So if you've read something and thought, hey, that was a little bit different, if it was dark and creepy, you know my taste in reading, please recommend it down below. I really need some different ideas. And there are so many psychological thrillers coming out these days, it's hard for me to weed through and figure out which ones are gonna be up my alley. So I'd love some help with that. Now getting into the books themselves, the first thriller I read was Disturbed by Jennifer Janes. And I heard about this from Kath's channel and I'm gonna link her down below because if you are looking for more thrillers, she is a great booktuber to follow. She reads thrillers quite regularly and particularly adult thrillers. So I do get recommendations from her and would highly recommend go checking her out if you're not already subscribed. But going back to the book, Disturbed is about a young woman who was partying in college. It was her friend's birthday on Halloween and something went horribly wrong and the police found her as the only survivor of this terrible massacre. Her boyfriend at the time was believed to have murdered everyone, but he has not been seen since and is now on the run. And the story starts a few years after that where she is now trying to put her life back together, but she is very scarred by this event and really struggles to move on. She has a lot of PSD and just has a lot of issues surrounding that. And the story starts with her starting to get some weird notes that of course, maybe the events from her past are catching up with her. Maybe things were not as simple as she thought. And I really enjoyed this one. This was quite short. It was very plot driven with a very gripping narrative. And that was exactly what I needed. I just flew through it. It did remind me a little bit of Final Girls by Riley Sager, but it's definitely not a copycat. It goes in a different direction. But I think if you like the setup of that one with a survivor of a massacre, you might also like this one as well. And I don't wanna say it's unguessable, but I didn't completely understand what was going on. I thought I did and I guess parts of it, but it did take me by surprise. I don't wanna oversell a twist because there are always gonna be smarter readers who will figure it out but I enjoyed it and it was just a lot of fun. The writing of the characters maybe weren't fantastic, but that's not what I go into when I go for a thriller. I really want something that can trick me, surprise me, and just get me really lost in the story. I love that escapist reading and this one really fit the bill. So I would definitely recommend this. It's available on Kindle Unlimited. So for anyone who has those subscriptions, you can check it out for free, but I do recommend checking it out. Now, I'm nervous to mention the second thriller I read this month because I have a pretty unpopular opinion, but that was The Chalk Man by C.J. Tudor. I received a copy from Penguin Random House Canada, and this book is so popular. Everyone's been loving it, so I had to check it out for myself. This follows a group of boys set in the 1980s. They are going around using chalk to communicate, and the story is very reminiscent of the book It. It has that idea of the kid set back in this nostalgic time, and there are some murders that begin to happen, and the boys start to get involved in what's happening. I don't want to give away too much of the plot, but I just did not connect with this story. I just didn't understand why everyone loved it so much, if I'm honest. I felt it was quite average. I didn't really love the writing or the characters. And I think for me, it really lacked a lot of tension. So personally, I can't recommend this, but I know other people love it. So if it is something you're thinking about picking up, maybe go and check out other people's reviews and find out what they loved about it so much because I just thought it was really average and I don't know, I didn't get it. I didn't understand what was the buzz around this one. So 
Unpopular opinion here, moving right along. Now to talk true crime, I read a book called Dangerous Grounds, My Friendship with a Serial Killer by M. William Phelps. Now this is a true account of a crime fiction writer who formed a relationship with a convicted serial killer as part of his plans to create a documentary series called Dark Minds, which showcases different serial killers, and he wanted to have a serial killer consultant. So he formed this relationship in order to pick his brain about other cases. And so the word friendship is a little bit misleading. He definitely attempts to keep that barrier between him and this person. But in doing this show, he had to spend a lot of time with him. And the story is partially about the serial killer himself, who on the show was only known as Raven, but is actually a very well-known serial killer. So if you do follow a lot of cases, you'll probably recognize who it is. But I just thought it was really interesting. And what I personally liked was the piece surrounding the author himself, because he is very open about his own struggles while he was in the midst of working with this man and what it did to him. He had stomach ulcers, he had anxiety, he had a bit of a crisis of faith because he is Catholic and really struggled to go through this period of time and trying to reconcile why he was spending time with this person. And it's just very different than a lot of the true crime stories you'll read out there. So I did overall enjoy it and would recommend it to other fans of true crime. Now I briefly want to talk science fiction and I read Starship's Mage by Glenn Stewart. This is a book that is primarily science fiction but it mixes in some fantasy because the way that ships are able to move in this universe at warp speed is through the use of starship mages, as the title suggests. So these magic users are able to propel the ships forward, and I really liked that blend of magic and technology. I thought it was really interesting and fresh. If I had to categorize it, I would still put it on the science fiction side of things, but the again, the magic was pretty cool. I felt that the characters were really weak, especially the women, and the writing wasn't overly exciting either. So I don't really recommend this one. The plot was average at best, but kind of had a cool concept, so I wanted to mention it anyway. Then I read a novella called Acadie by Dave Hutchison, and this is a piece of space opera set in a future where a group of colonists have left Earth because they wanted to pursue genetic engineering, which was somewhat prohibited on Earth, and the story is set in this future. It's very lighthearted in tone. It has some very goofy moments. It was entertaining and it was interesting to see space opera done on such a small scale because typically I'm used to reading space opera in large epic books like the Expanse series. While I enjoyed parts of the story, I wasn't particularly happy with the ending, which is going to be very polarizing. So depending on how you feel about the ending is definitely going to affect your overall opinion of this little novella. So if you have read it, you know what I mean, but that's one I somewhat enjoyed, but wasn't overly excited about at the end. And finally, I want to round out my video talking about graphic novels. I read volume five of Descender by Jeff Lemire. This is a series I've been talking about for quite a while. It follows a young AI boy who is a companion to a human. And in this future, something has happened where humans are no longer trusting of the AI and are basically hunting them down and destroying that technology. I love the artwork and I definitely recommend the series. To anyone who's just a fan of those artificial intelligence stories, I thought this one was really well done and I will definitely continue on as the volumes come out. I'm also still reading a manga called What Did You Eat Yesterday? about a really cute older gay couple that are living in Japan and are trying to live frugally and still eat delicious food. It's cute, it's totally different than the other stuff I read, but I really enjoy it and it always makes me wanna make stir fry after I finish, so I do recommend that one if it sounds up your alley. And finally, I wanna talk about Bingo Love by T. Franklin. This is a wonderful contemporary story about a lifelong relationship between two women. They met in school and fell in love, but through circumstances and the situation of the time, 
they did not stay together but instead went off and married men but as older women they get reunited through their love of bingo and their story goes from there it's generally a very positive story about a lesbian couple, but at the same time, it does have some really emotional moments. I really liked the depth of the story. I felt that the plot was complex enough. I worried that it'd be overly simple, but I thought it was just very well done. It has some wonderful diversity, not only featuring characters of different sexual orientations, but you see women of color, you see women with different body types, with curves, and I got a lot of good feelings from this one. I just think it's really well done. So anyone who enjoys a story with those feel-good moments, this is a really nice graphic novel to pick up. I do recommend it. So those are all the books I read in the month of February. As always, let me know down below if you have any questions. And I also want to remind you to give me recommendations for some psychological thrillers that you think I would enjoy. I really need some recommendations right now. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please consider following me on Goodreads, Twitter, or Instagram. And I will talk to you again soon in another video. Thanks. Goodbye. Okay,